Hello guys, so every now and then I get a mod request for an emulent light. Uh, I'm not really a fan of emulent lights just because I have gotten several bad experiences with their lights. They're just not the best built and um, reliability from the factory just wasn't great. Um, so I never really given them a chance. I think, I, I don't know, I'm kind of a little biased, but I think they're kind of a gimmick with some of their technology. Anyhow. So today, um, I've gotten a box full of imminent lights. I don't know what's in it. We're going to open it together. But I got this box donated to me from a customer that told me he is just sick of imminent lights and um, he was just going to throw them away, you know, like literally throw them in the trash can. And then he thought about me and I was like, hey, you know what, I'm just going to send it my way so I can take a look to see if uh, what I think about them. So. Um, who knows, uh, I haven't really handled any of the newer recent Imolent lights and I believe that there are some newer, relatively new models in this box. We'll see what's all in this box and uh, what I think of all of the different models that are in here. Uh, and if Imolent, if I still think so poorly of Imolents, okay? We'll see. Very generous of this customer to think of me before he, um, uh, Toss these out because who knows you know uh, I've been wrong before there are several brands that I don't really like initially and um, I end up liking them and then there are some brands that I think I would like like night cores and I'm just not really a fan of night cores even though they make pretty good lights okay so uh, I have here in front of me a Imolent DN70 and again I'm not familiar with any of these models okay put this box right here let's see what we all got here and I don't know what cells all of these take, so I just brought down a bunch of cells. This is my sushi knife. Ah, uh, okay, Imolent DT70. I think this is the light that um, I've gotten a lot of requests to mod. Uh, oh, DN70 and then DT70. Okay. Ash. Actually, I'm not even sure if these lights still work because um, I just know that my buddy is just tired of these lights, so he just decided to toss them out and then send them over to me instead. So I don't even know if they work or not. Uh, Imolent DDT40. Okay. A couple of posters. Okay. Uh, HR20. So he sent me five lights and a DT35. Okay. All right, so which one should we start with? Let's try the HR20. Actually, um, let's stack these on the side here. Okay, let's talk about the holsters. I'm not sure which light they go with. Poster seems to be of good quality. Pretty much like any of the other mainstream posters. Oh, there's a rechargeable cell here. An emulet cell. Okay, I think. It's blue, just likely emulet. Emulet, 4500 milliamp hours, high discharge, made in China. Da, da, da. Looks like a pretty good cell. Built-in circuit board. It's okay. All right. So the holsters looks pretty decent. The cell looks pretty decent also. Nicely wrapped. All right. So here we have uh, an HR20, a thousand lumen Cree XPLHI um, headlamp. I think. Oh, it looks very new. Uh, the USB cable looked like it never came out of the box. Actually, this whole entire light looks brand new. Pocket clip, couple of O-rings. Wow, the light itself is just extremely light. Okay. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. Decent quality. 
just as good as any other headlamp band. Let me check out the machine here. It's actually, it looks pretty good. Um, the anodization is not, doesn't look that thick and there's some missing anode spot. Not sure if that's from used or if that's what it came like from the factory, but it looks pretty good. There's a control ring here, that's pretty neat. And then on, off, I guess, oh, that's the button, okay. Okay, so there's an on off button here. And then on the other side, there's a micro USB charging port with two LEDs on the side with a control ring. So maybe this is variable brightness, we'll see. It's kind of fun just to play with these lights for the first time on camera. Doesn't work. Maybe the tail cap wasn't fully tightened. Yeah, maybe it wasn't fully tightened. Oh, there we go. Click to turn on, click to turn off. Really nice, decent beam. And turn the ring. Oh, nice. It's an infinitely variable brightness. Low. Mm, this is pretty cool. Okay. Wow, I can't see any post width modulations uh, blink flickers. So, no PWM flickers. That's really nice. And it's a really nice low low. Okay. I, I gotta admit, the light does feel a little flimsy and and and. I wouldn't say cheap, but it feels flimsy. And the control ring is a little light on effort. I wish it was a little heavier. But you know, that's not a big deal. It can be fixed. And on max brightness, it throws decently with a nice hot spot. Now, this is a good, this is so far, I, um, this is a decent headlamp. I like it. It seems to have like a ramp up to brightness when you turn it on, but it's not a very smooth ramp. Uh, only on turbo does it do that. Press and hold gives you strobe. Okay. And I guess press and hold gives you strobe at any level. Oh, well, okay. You can control the strobe brightness also. That's pretty neat. <laughs> Look at that. So low. And then you can turn up the strobe. And um, so you probably can't see none of this on camera, but there's a control ring right here that turns to brightness. So click to turn on, and then you can see if I turn the ring here. And the ring is only partially exposed. It's not exposed in the front. It's only exposed in the back. So if it's on your head, I guess you can just... It's not easy to, to accidentally activate the ring. And you can just turn the ring here. The ring feels really loose and I mean, it's a nice headlamp, okay? I'm not sure how much it costs, but pretty nice quality. This one is, uh, is nice because of infinitely controlled brightness ring and there's not a lot of um, not a lot of similar control ring out there on a headlamp. Not Actually, there's none. I don't know I have another one. But there's not a lot of infinitely control, uh, variable control brightness light at all on the market at the moment. So, Immolent. That's good, okay? That, that, well, we're off to a very good start. Emulent DN70. Box, of, looks kind of like an Olight, um, Olight Ace Beam box, actually. So here's the light itself. Let's put the headlamp aside. Okay. Let's see what's in this box. Posters, O-rings, micro USB cable, manual. Okay, all right. Uh, again, same kind of deal here. It feels really, really light, and the body parts. Uh, actually, this one has a pretty nice thick body with square threads. Nice, cool blue tail cap. 
multifunctional all LED display flashlight. Okay, Flood King, the DN70 Immolent Flood King. Pretty nice, cool blue tail cap. Has an LCD screen here with two buttons. Um, this light has an XHP70 shave dome from the factory. So that's, well actually I don't know if it's from the factory. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's shave dome from the factory because uh, my buddy here, I don't think he um, got this light modded by someone else. So uh, likely this light have a XHP70 shave dome. Looks to be cool white. Uh, nice decent orange pure reflector. Very nice, good, small size, okay? Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the battery that should be used in this light. If not, we'll find out. Okay, so right when you put the battery in, it says Imbolent on the screen, okay? Let's see if I can get that to happen on camera. Nope, guess not. There we go, it says Imbolent right there. And here's the uh, micro USB port, port, charging port in the back. Okay. Uh, okay, no, nice. It seems to be current um, regulated or at least um, very fast flicker rate if it's PWM. Uh, it says 20 lumen, 4.2 volt, 20 lumen, 4.2 volt, and it alternates on the screen. So that's pretty cool. So the right button turns. I guess it turns on the light and ramps through the different levels. The left buttons, what does the left one does? Strobe. Oh, and when it says strobe, it says STR on the screen. When it does SOS, it will say SOS on the screen. And then if you double click, it goes into beacon, strobe. SOS beacon. All right. So beacon is one of those um, slow flash. So the right buttons control the the uh, constant brightness level. One, two, three, one, and then I guess double click gives you turbo. I think. No. I don't think double click gives you turbo. It's just there. It's, there seems to be just three level. Low, medium, high, low, medium, high. Okay, press and hold turns the light off. So, that's a decent UI, decent screen. I kind of like this light, actually. It's okay, so um, press and hold to turn it off. Let's see if I can press and hold from off. Uh, press and hold from off doesn't do anything. Okay. Press and hold on the um, disco mode button on the left here. Gives you this, uh, I think it's a momentary... Uh, I think it's just instantly access turbo, okay? And on the screen it says 3,800 lumen. And then the button on the right side will turn it on and off. So it's okay, the UI is all right. Um, instant turbo by press and hold, the strobe button over here, the, the disco button, and then the power button on the left, on the right here turns it on and off. Every single successive press is, alternates the level. There's, it seems to be, there seems to be three different levels. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, 20 lumen, 300 lumen, 2,500 lumen. So, double click does not do anything, okay? Double click on the right button doesn't really, have, in order, the only way to get into turbo is to press and hold the disco button on the left, and that will give you 3,800 lumen, but the funny thing is if I let it go under several, like a couple of seconds, it will turn off. It's like a two seconds momentary turbo. So you actually have to press and hold it for a little while. And then if you double click, it goes into strobes. And then onto all the disco modes. Honestly, not really my favorite UI. It's kind of cool with the screen and um, seems to be a, a pretty cute, small light, nice light. Okay, not bad at all. Much better than I thought, okay? All right, what else do we have here? Immolent, Immolent DDT40. 4,500 lumen plus 1,180 lumens. Let's see what that means. Um, 
looks right off. Oh, okay. Yes, this one has a uh, AC charging adapter, a couple of O-rings, silica gel pack, and uh, manual, all of that. One O-ring's already broken. <laughs> the adapter actually says implant on it. That is poorly applied. <laughs> it's not fitted in the box, but hey, at least they went through the effort to print out the emulent label for the adapter. This looks kind of like one of those Night Cores um, TM series. Mode. Well, okay. This one is complicated. There is buttons over here, there's buttons over here, and there is touch pads over here. Uh, this one's complicated. All right, we'll see. Lots of threads. Holds 4 18650. Let's see if we have 4 18650 here. Okay. Decent quality. It looks pretty good. That's the charging port. Yep. Oh crap. See, that's what I'm talking about. I just plugged in the, um, <laughs> the AC adapter and the, uh, the charging port came right out of the light. So yeah, definitely gotta re-glue that. Let me show you guys how that, what happened there again. So I plugged this in and then that whole thing, the whole socket came out. So if you have one of these, uh, be aware. I would drop in a little piece of, I mean, I would drop in some super glue right in, right about there. Actually, I wouldn't even use, I wouldn't even use this. I was, I was just charged to sell outside of the light. Okay, all right, let's see what we got here. Mode. Oh, my fault. Mode, mode. Maybe this light doesn't work. Is this, so these touch pad, it says mode on them. Mode. Oh, okay, when you press mode, these thing turns on. Oh, there's an LCD screen on here, it says 4.16 volt. Doesn't do anything. Wow, it even has this picture of a, um, of like a thermometer that tells you what temperature the light's in. 14, 4.16 volt. Oh, crap, this is crazy. It has a built-in um, compass on here. North, south, east, west. So this direction right now is southwest 207 degrees. That's pretty cool. Temperature, okay, voltage readings, a compass, temperature, off. So I'm not sure if that's the temperature of the light or the room temperature. All right, and then there's a mode button on the left here. I have no clue what it does. It does not turn on the screen or anything. Maybe this light is broken. Oh, there's a button here. Yay! We found the t we found the button that turns the light on and off. Okay, so. Oh wow, this piece of glass in here is loose. That one's firm, that one's firm, that one's firm. This one's loose. So even though the ring is on tight, the glass here is loose. Okay, anyway, so um, really nice tint. And really nice, um, maybe 4500 Kelvin or something. So that button turns on the light. And this button turns on the uh, Oh, it turns on like these diffuser LEDs on the side here. Okay, so you can see here it will turn on that one um, diffuser light here on the left, one diffuser right here on the right, and then if you press it again, both of it turns on. Okay, and click it. If you click that button, it turns off the. Um, uh, what does it turn off? It turns off the the, the diffuser light. And there's a mode button here, so let me guess. This mode button here, this mode button here does not change. It only changed the details on the LCD screen. Oh, 
Oh, you can, these pads, you can press on them. So by pressing and holding them down, there is an image on the screen that ramps up and down. So here you have Moonlight, okay? And if I, I imagine if you press and hold the top button, you ramp up. No post width modulation blink, so that's pretty good. I like that. And then you press and hold the top button here, and you can see ramps up. The funny thing is though, um, when it ramps up, there's this black bar that runs out when it should be the other way around. So this black bar fills up on the screen as the light ramps down very slowly. Okay, and then rams up by pressing on this top button. Oh, this is just too damn slow. I don't have enough patience for this. Okay, so it seems to just flicker a little bit. Okay, so it's pretty cool, right? Um, on the turbo mode, it flickers a lot. So if you ramp it down a little bit, it stops. Okay, on turbo, it flickers. And on the lower, just knock it down a little bit, it stops, it flickers. And I forgot how to turn it off. Oh, that round button. Nope, has an old, yep. So look, this light is incredibly complicated. There's a round button here that turns on and off, press to turn on, press, uh, press and hold to turn off. And then there's a button here on the right here. Once the light is on, you press this, uh, crap. This is, there's a mode button on the left side here that you press to activate these these three set of LEDs. Diffuser, diffuser, uh, lantern, lantern, and then these front forward lights, okay? And then uh, there's another mode button on the right side here that if you, um, that probably just do screen readings, yeah. And then there's, on this side, there's the ramp up and ramp down. So this slide is just overly complicated. Ramp up and down, there's diffuser, there's a mode button here, there's a power button, there is a diffuser, and another mode button here. And on the, on the LCD screens that displays whatever information that's going on, there is a touch sensitive mode to ramp up and mode to ramp down here. Whew. Nice idea, really. But I think as the execution is just too complicated and the quality is just not really there. Oh. I don't want to bash on this particular light. I think it's very smart. It has some nice technology that I wouldn't necessarily call gimmicks, okay? It seems to... It's a good effort. I gotta say, it's a good effort how there is that two um, lantern there on the side. So the, the, the functionality is there. The screen is cool. The ramp up and down is kind of a gimmick, okay? But, and the UI is just overly complicated. They need to have a way to um, figure that part out, okay? But other than the UI, the, the functionality of the light itself, being a light that has forward lighting um, and sides, Diffuser is very um, respectable, okay? But in terms of build quality, it's, it's not, it's, it's emulent, okay? So, it's what I thought emulent would be. <sighs> emulent DT70, and I think this is the very popular, one of the popular um, DT70. DT70 sounds familiar. This might be that one, like. Yep, I think this is it. DT70. I think this is the light that um, I originally gotten a really bad luck with, and my so does my customers. I think it's this light. I don't remember that light having a screen though. We'll see. Um, so uh, four shape dome XHP70 uh, with um, rather deep but orange peel reflector. Okay. Let's see how good this one is. I'm not sure what cells these light takes, and um, but I'm running VTC fives in all of them. Okay, 
right the minute you turn it on, the screen says Immolent. Press on the power buttons, ramps through the different levels as we come to expect. And the right button, does it double click on the right button, gets you through all of the uh, disco level, dif disco functions, okay? All right, so press and hold to turn off, and I'm pretty sure if I press and hold that button, it's gonna give me turbo, and it turns off. See that, that's, that's just weird. You have to press and hold it for like two seconds. One, two, and then it locks. And this one is pretty dang bright. Nice. Okay. Very floody, as you would expect from four XHP70. Okay. Um, artifacts galore, but that's also expected due to the um, the uh, reflector wells. And right now it says sixteen thousand lumen. I'm not sure if that's really sixteen thousand lumen, but we won't know until we put it in the meter. It might be. 80 lumen, 1,000, that does not look like 1,000, uh, 8,000, I don't know, that doesn't look like 8,000 either. <laughs> and that, but the weird thing is the 80 lumen, that looks a lot dimmer than 80 lumen, okay? And a lot dimmer than 1,000. So, um, press the turn off. So, in order to access that turbo, you kind of have to turn off the light and press and hold this. If I don't, if I'm missing something, then my, it's my fault, but I think the UI is kind of odd, okay? But it's a, it's, it's a really bright light, though. Um, I'm not sure if it's 16,000, but it's bright. It's definitely bright. It looks at least, I don't know, maybe 12,000, 10,000? I don't know if it's 16, but yeah, it's nice. Okay. Click to turn off. Nope, that doesn't turn off. You press and hold to turn off. So they have these weird UI. You kind of have to get used to. UIs are never really good or bad. UIs are just something that you get used to. Okay? Um, a lot of people think the zebra light user interface is the best, but not a lot. Not everybody does. I think it's. I think it's very good. I love it. But a lot of people think the zebra light. I mean, some people think the zebra light user interface is is too complicated while most others thinks it's great so um, I don't really personally like the UI in this light but maybe other people do when after they get used to it there are these dirts and black spots all over the LED I'm not sure why and there's a chip on the LED so um, I'll give I'll give my final thoughts after I'm done with the last light we have here Immolent, DT35, Throw King, real lace. The Throw King in this tiny little box. We'll see. Okay, so it seems to me that this Throw King is basically this light, but with now four smooth reflector wells and um, XHP35s. Mm, XHP 35 is interesting. Okay. I'm pretty sure the handle swaps because they look identical. And by now, I think I've gotten used to the uh, user interface. Let's go straight to turbo. Press and hold. No, press and hold longer. Wow, that is a lot of artifacts. Um, let me just shine it around and see how good it is. No, um, it's all right. Frankly, I'm not that impressed, but I think the hots, it just doesn't look very bright. And it's okay. It's, it's pretty good. It depends on how much it costs, okay? If this is like 150 bucks, then, um, I, I don't know. I won't pay 150 bucks, but God. I hate bashing on lights because I, I love every light and I think they have really tried. See the beam is not round, it's kind of a weird square shape. That is odd. See the hot spot is not round, like it's not focused right or something. And there is awfully a lot of artifacts. Okay.
um, 80 lumen, 1,000. You know, I, I, I know for sure that's not 1,000 lumen, okay? I might be wrong on turbo, but I know that's not 1,000. Not, that does not look 5,000. Okay, so uh, the readings on the output here might be a little off. Let's see what it reads on turbo. 8,500. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Maybe it is approximately 8,500 on the turbo level. So I think they got the turbo not far off, but the uh, the other levels, I think it's, it's quite far off. Reflector quality seems okay. LED seems decently centered. Um, I guess it's because here's one mistake that most of these multi-reflector light makes. They make the reflector way too damn deep, okay? And too small in diameter to cramp a lot of LEDs. Just because you have a lot of, they try to, I guess the effort is to add more surface area to reflect light, but depth doesn't really do much. Depth just put a lot of lumen in the corona, not in the hot spot. You need a lot of width to put lumen into the hot spot, and that's what really makes throw. So right here on this light, you have four relatively deep reflector, but the width of each is not that much. This is the reason why we don't have a very wide spill. This UI. We don't have very wide spill, and we have an, an, an immense amount of, um, of what do you call it, um, artifacts. And the corona here, you can see the corona is really bright, but the hot spot itself is not all that bright because it's not a lot of lumen in the hot spot. So that's why it doesn't look very impressive. But so if I were to make this light, and if I if this is the only diameter head I have to I get to work with. I'll sacrifice, I'll sacrifice um, some of the depth here to have wider spill beam and less less lumen in the corona, but I'll, I'll, I think it would improve the, um, it won't reduce the hotspot intensity all that much, but you have a nicer beam and I think it's just, it'll be a nicer light, okay? Less artifacts all crumped to get together. I think they make the uh, Imlint is making a pretty good effort with their um, LCD screen. Okay, and that's pretty cool. It's kind of a nice feature to be able to see what the light's doing. The user interface that's totally preference. Okay, I'm not gonna bash on that too much. I think their build quality is not all that bad. It's definitely better than a budget light. Of course, it's nowhere near Ace Beam or Phoenix yet. Okay, but um. It's all right. It's actually, it feels really good. Um, on this particular sample, it feels really nice. Um, there's not really anything that I can say that is that the qual the build quality is not good. There's nothing that I can like point out right away and say it's not good. Everything seems to be okay. The packaging seems okay. It's, I think what troubles me most is some of these um, fit and finished. Like the anodization is wearing off here on the side. Uh, anode specs are missing around the edges here. But for the most part, the functionality is there and it's pretty cool. Would I recommend these lights? Not really. Um, I think they're a better choice. I don't know how what the price range of these are. I guess if they're decently cheaper than the others, um, yeah, they're, they're worth a shot. Uh, reliability wise I don't know by seeing some of this build fit and finish I can't re I can't firmly say that it has good reliability okay even though the physical machining and build quality seems okay seems pretty good better than most budget lights and I don't think these are considered budget lights because I, I, I don't think they're that cheap of all of these lights here I think that um, oh god these three lights right here basically have the same UI. The two weird button and the screen in the middle. And that's just, that's kind of, uh, that kills it for me. The two lights that I think that is worth, um, that is kind of fun. The headlight is, is, is a good attempt. And I think this is a really good headlight. Uh, what Imlet needs to do is just make that, um, 
ring a little heavier. And I think they got themselves their a winner on, on this headlamp. I don't know what the price is, but um, if the price is decently priced, this is a pretty nice headlamp, okay? With the very cool magnetic control ring. Um, I don't think it's a very fast way to control the levels though, because it's kind of out of the way. You can't really spin the whole thing with two fingers. You kind of have to put one finger in there and then spin this ring up and down. So it's not very convenient, even though it's kind of a cool feature because none of the other um, light has it. Okay, so that's kind of neat. The light does feel a little light, so I don't know how well it would heat sink. There's a lot of futuristic details and machining on these lights too. Um, to me, that's not a good thing because I think that's just overly done and um, it just takes away from the from the light sometime in my opinion. I just like lights to be plain. It's all right to have futuristics once in a while, but I think Imelin is trying really hard to make all their lights look extremely futuristic, okay? Um, yet, uh, they try to cramp in a lot of tech too, but it doesn't flow very well. But here's what I think. I think that if they keep if they keep it at this pace, I think Imlin has a has a very good future. They have the technology. They have they have the technology to build themselves a very good light. Um, they have the engineering down, okay, with the with the technology. They have the engineering technology down with nice display screen, and um, like this one right here, that's that's pretty innovative with lantern, uh, lantern diffuser lights on the sides and forward going light in the front. I really like lights with individual reflector well because you you know you get a perfect beam with no artifacts, okay. I hate lights with over reflect over um, overlapped reflector wells because chances are you're gonna have a very bad beam unless you have relatively shallow um, reflector wells or very very wide um, reflector wells okay otherwise you're gonna have very bad beams or artifacts in the beam so um, in my opinion this light is kind of no no uh, this light definitely no no Okay, uh, what, what's the name of these lights? A DT70. This light is definitely no no. Um, DT35. I like this light because it has four XHP70 uh, shaved dome, really nice high output and reflector. The orange pure reflector gives it a pretty decent beam. This light, sure. Okay. Um, this light right here is very nice, cool shape. I don't like the UI, but that's just my personal preference. I think this is a good light, okay? This is likely the most solid build light on the table at the moment. Nice uh, is blue. This blue, not really a tail cap, but this blue rear end right here looks pretty cool. It adds some character to it. Um, it, it seems like a nice, well-built light with decent um, performance, okay? User interface, it's okay. This light... Although, as much as I hate it, I think it has it has a future. And with the tech that's in this light, uh, it shows that Imolent has potential. Like serious potential that other companies should beware because a company that is like Imolent that, uh, that I'm not giving very high praise of will surpass all the other companies because they have the tech down. They just need to implement it um, yeah, they need to work on the implementation part. Otherwise, they have the tech, okay? So this is a light that I think, yeah. You guys out there, other manufacturers, keep an eye out on Imlet because lights like this, once it gets better and refined, you know. You know what's coming. Um, same goes here. Very innovative with the control ring. Very, very innovative. Um, I don't like the execution, again, that you can't really fully control the ring and the ring's too light and it seems rel relatively cheap but it has the tech okay that's what i'm trying to say these two emulants has the tech and that is something for all the other manufacturers out there to worry about as for me a modder uh, a modder of light no a, uh, i'm not gonna i'm not changing my mind i'm not working on emulants anytime soon 
Um, I haven't taken these apart to see if the LEDs are even on copper. Um, so I don't really know how good they are internally. But hey, all of these lights work. Okay, I don't know how much my buddy used them, but they sent it to me and it's, it, they still work, so they're okay. Okay, that's all I have to say about Imolent, and um, I honestly, truly wish them a, um, a progressive future where they will uh, take their technology to the next step and, and overcomes the little things here and there that elevates them, okay? I really hope to see that. For me, personally, no. No Imolents yet, okay? Thank you.